depending on the amount of heat supplied to the metal before mechanical force is applied on it. The two ways are cold working and hot working. Let's first try to understand cold working. Consider a polycrystalline cube of sulfur in which grains are present in equal amounts in all the three directions. Let's place it between a ram and base at the room temperature and apply compressive force on both the ram present at top. We see that the cube gets compressed as the grains present in it get deformed and elongated. Hence the cube gets recrystallized due to the internal movement of the dislocations already present in the cube. Thus the sulfur cube gets plastically deformed into an elongated bar of increased strength and hardness but decreased ductility. Thus we can say that the plastic deformation process of metals at a temperature below the recrystallization temperature is called cold working. Note that when the metal gets plastically deformed by cold working process, stresses get induced in it which are removed by annealing. Now let us try to understand hot working. Consider the same sulfur cube. Now let us first heat this cube in a closed chamber at a temperature above the recrystallization temperature. Now let us place this heated cube between the rams. and apply compressive force on the heated cube. We see that since the cube is soft and ductile due to heating, it gets deformed faster than in the cold working. This is because the grains present in the hot sulfur cube get deformed and elongated quickly, which then recrystallizes under applied pressure. Here also the metal cube gets plastically deformed to elongated bar of increased ductility, strength and toughness, but decreased yield strength. Thus we can say that the plastic deformation process of metals at a temperature above the recrystallization temperature is called hot working. Some of the common cold working processes are Some of the common hot working processes are Finally, let us summarize the differences between cold and hot working processes. Related